Good evening. Welcome to the Week in Review. I'm Paris Schutz. Alderman Ed Burke pleads not guilty to federal corruption charges. Uh, Alderman Burke, do you plan to resign? Burke faces 14 counts, including bribery and racketeering. Mayor Lori Lightfoot renewed her call for Burke to step down and unveiled a slew of ethics proposals. This is a watershed moment for Illinois. And it, it took so many people to get us here. Governor J.B. Pritzker gets his first budget across the finish line, but past the deadline. Until we hold violent offenders accountable the way that they should be, we're going to continue to see this. Now, as far 52 as shot and at least eight look, killed in Chicago's you know, most we violent weekend the, so far this year. And in sports. Caught by the second baseman, Rogers, and the Rockies avoid the sweep. The Cubs take two out of three from the Rockies and pick up some much-needed pitching help. The White Sox drop two against the Nats. Joining us are Derek Blakely of CBS2 Chicago, Amanda Vinicky of our own WTTW News, Brandon Pope of WCIU, and Mike Mulligan of 670 The Score. Let's get right to some of the state news. Derek Blakely, Governor Pritzker marveled at having a balanced state budget for the first time in a long time. Is this really a big accomplishment? Well, uh, given the last few years in Illinois, when we didn't have a budget at all, yes, I think it is a, a big accomplishment. It shouldn't be, but given our past state of affairs here, it has been. Look, uh, J.B. Pritzker and the Democratic coalition swept the field down there. He got almost everything that he campaigned on, recreational marijuana, sports betting, this huge capital program, $40 billion worth of spending, backed up by a doubling primarily in the gas tax that's going to pay for it. Even Republicans were happy about that because they got to take some bacon home, which is what legislators love to do. Um, so you have to give him credit for that. He also got, of course, the graduated income tax referendum on the ballot. That's going to uh, give voters a say in whether they want to remake the way a government is financed in Illinois. No doubt it was a humongous agenda that got passed, but Amanda Vinicky, why all in the 11th hour, and in some instances, beyond the 11th hour. So I actually want to address that, but also go back to this notion that it was a watershed moment. Let's be clear here. It is a basic function of government to, to pass a budget. A budget. To, to just even to pass one, whether it's balanced or not, we haven't really had time to fully look into that. There's certainly, um, we hear from both sides that they call it that. They also called last year's budget, which by the way, also passed on time and with bipartisan support. So this is actually a second year in a row. One could contend that last year was even a bigger accomplishment because it was during the Rauner era. Thing, this, this budget spends more than last year. It does. And they're balancing it without any kind of big tax there, hike. So how did that happen? tax structure. It just hasn't gotten a lot of attention because it's on managed care organizations, which in themselves are fairly complicated. Part of the reason that it is spending more is because you've got a higher pension payment. And the state, on, although Pritzker, the governor, had originally proposed taking a pension holiday and skipping making that pension payment through what he said was a series of changes. He said it was responsible. Many people thought it would not be. That ended up not happening due in part to a federal windfall, but also because, again, you do have this managed care tax. That's not the only area of spending, though. You are seeing more money going to higher education, to schools, to DCFS. I mean, there's a whole gamut of areas that really had been, they say, starved and needed this money. They say that they still need more. So that's where, yes, it's certainly to call it a balanced budget, fine, all well and good. These are all prognostications. But Illinois certainly is not out of the weeds at all when it comes to pensions, when it comes to a bill backlog. That remains. Brandon Pope, do you believe that this is a truly balanced budget? Uh, I, I mean, I think Republicans and Democrats are still uh, uh, fooling themselves a little bit on whether that's the case or not for them themselves. I think there are, there is good news for people. You mentioned with the DCFS. I mean, we know the the drama that they had going on and, and the and the backlog and the problems with people calling their hotline and people not responding to it. Supposedly this is going to hire 300 more staffers. Is that enough? That's going to be a big question. But there are some things positive from that budget. For Mike sure. Mulligan, is Illinois going in the right direction here with all this new gambling, sports betting at Soldier Field, marijuana, er anytime you want it? It, it was kind of a vice budget, right? Isn't that? Uh, <laughs> we're the sin state now. Forget sin city, the sin state. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Look, I, I mean, they're, they're obviously desperate for money, and everybody, no one has it in government mm. anywhere. And so they're doing things, they're taking advantage of opportunities that have been going around around the country, right? And, and it's interesting, we'll, I know we'll talk about where the casinos should be and all this stuff. 
They're talking about putting it down south in order partly to take it away from Indiana. And everybody who wants to gamble has been able to gamble either with a bookie or traveling down there or doing, you know, rivers, whatever you want to say. Now Chicago gets a piece of the pie, Illinois expanding it like crazy. I don't know how I feel about, you know, playing a one-armed bandit at the airport, but um, <laughs> I could miss a flight. Um, <laughs> no, but I just, I think You'll that that's You'll miss your flight to doing. Vegas, Mike. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Derek, so how about that? Where should the Chicago casino go? Uh, that's a good question, and that's being debated. Uh, you know, the governor has said he would like to see it go. Uh, in a disadvantaged area to bring uh, more jobs to perhaps the south or west side. But, but, I, is, but I don't is there know. a downside to that? Well, there's two questions. One, you know, who do you want to soak? If you're trying right. to soak the tourists, uh, you want to have it in a more central location where they are more likely to come. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is, I wonder how much economic development casinos actually bring because casinos are built to suck people in and not have them go out that's, that's and, the and dollars they won't spend on a restaurant or a, or a car movie theater or, or a nightclub it's all self-contained so yes you'll bring jobs to those areas in that building but will it spark development around the building uh we haven't seen that in a lot of other places and amanda the 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 um uh, receipts for for casinos have gone down or the sort of the the revenue in the last several years so how would illinois support six more casinos and racinos and more slot machines i mean that's the thing it's not just the chicago casino there is going to be gambling everywhere and perhaps if you live within city limits you don't recognize that quite as much but elsewhere including in unincorporated cook county there are video gaming terminals at every bar restaurant there are standalone facilities they too get to add machines i mean there is just going to be gambling everywhere so that again this is where it gets back to the point of this is a budget they're betting if you will on the money that they have predicted to come through this is all supposed to pay for long-term infrastructure projects that's not what the budget itself is balanced on but I, I mean certainly that's that's a question Brandon and I do want to say real quick Paris I'm sorry just in terms of because this has gotten a lot of I think attention in terms of um, viewers and folks that are following they hear the word this was a this was a year that was monumental, consequential. That Pritzker took a victory lap, and in fact, it was a lot was done. To be clear, none of us are making judgments on whether or not that is positive or negative for mm -hmm. the state. It is merely stating that a lot that is huge and monumental for the state in terms of changing its trajectory. And happens. we should point out two things that weren't done, though. Yes. Uh, because pensions, uh, go pensions. Governor yeah, Rauner, big one. Governor big Rauner one. Uh, ran on property tax. Uh, lowering your property tax along with changing the tax structure. But again, uh, kick that can down the road. We have another commission to study that. We don't need commissions to raise taxes. We can seem to do that. <laughs> but to lower them, we always need a commission to study it. So the Democrats took a flyer on that. And the other thing is uh, the pension question. Uh, Democrats are control everything in Springfield now. They have no one else to blame. And they simply did not do anything to address the long-term pension crisis. And gun safety Pope. also, they, th th that was something else that didn't and get passed under Democratic super, in, super majority. In the veto session. Brandon Pope, do you think casino gaming revenue is going to uh, equal what legislators are hoping for? I think that's the interesting thing about this discussion. You raise a good point, Derek, is like, do casinos actually help? And there's a lot of studies from ProPublica that show that casinos in neighborhoods that are disadvantaged, they take advantage of the poor, the elderly, and the black. Um, so if you're going to bring it to, they're talking about bringing it to possibly Bronzeville. Um, do the people in Bronzeville want that? I think you're going to see, if that is a proposition there, you're going to see some activists opposing that strongly uh, because of that very concern that maybe it's not going to actually be well, a help a or economic. between jobs and contracting sure. versus we want our people to go and spend their money there. Yeah, yeah. M uh, Mike Mulligan, also we're talking about uh, the uh, infrastructure bill that's going to see gas tax go up, uh, cigarette tax go up. Are you going to drive to Indiana or Wisconsin to fill up now? <laughs> no, no. I, I, uh, <laughs> I, barely, I barely get to work and back. Uh, listen, I, I got to tell you, I mean, it just seems like every time you turn around, there is some tax doubled somewhere. And, you know, property tax is a huge problem for people dealing with, you know, new home owners and people that have homes that are trying to get out of them. It just, every time you turn around, we are, you know, are we not the most taxed county in, in the world, I believe, if I'm not mistaken? Cook County's crazy. Now that we're adding more taxes, I, this is, 
at some point, there's, we're going to reach a breaking point. And that's why maybe these vices, as much as they don't help, at least they slow down some of the, the taxing that's on the way. Well, and that's just state taxing. I mean, we now right, have right. Mayor Lori Lightfoot, who has, of course, the city's own budget problems to solve, so there could be additional revenue taxes, fees on the way there. I mean, this is not the oh, end. No. We, everybody's in trouble. Or a progressive income tax, which Governor Pritzker successfully got on the ballot. Derek, what are the next steps for that? Well, the next step, of course, is uh, the big battle you're going to be seeing in the media uh, before now, and between now and November 2020, on uh, on the merits or demerits of this proposal. Uh, the governor has uh, an arm which is allied with him, which he has largely funded, which is going to be uh, just filling the airways with commercials, as our opponents on the business side. Uh, the business people say this is the thin end of the wedge, you know, the elephant's nose under the tent. If you let this happen, it's just the first of uh, uh, the tax increases you're going to see. The they're House, soaking the rich the, first, but they're coming for the right, middle the, class Right, the House later. Minority Leader Jim Durkin called it pickpocketing taxpayers. Well, a big question I have is, are there enough rich people to gain the revenue you need uh, here in Chicago and in, in the state overall? And do they um, have their primary residences in Illinois, or are they going to list it somewhere else? I mean, you, the big billionaires and billionaires are in California. They're in New York. Are you really depending on these highly, highly rich people? We don't really have that many. I think it would be a lot more sellable. And it, who knows? It still may pass. It needs 60 percent of the voters, not a simple majority, yeah. but 60 percent of the voters to get rid of the flat tax structure. But it would be a lot more um, assailable if there was that property tax reduction element that you could propose uh, with it in some that, house. Could still be happen? coming. I mean, there is so a commission they put together. If there's a task force. Again, there have been so many task forces about this. This is not a novel concept. <laughs> task force is, is yet, English for we're not going to deal with this right it now. Off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. But <laughs> at the same time, they do have time. I mean, before this goes on the ballot, this, of course, isn't until November of 2020. So there's plenty of opportunity still for state lawmakers to go in and do that. And that is something that there is bipartisan agreement on. Everybody wants to take that home to their voters. You're talking about living. Nobody has done it because, of course, that is a very difficult ask. If you're going to lower property taxes go in mostly to fund the local schools. Mm -hmm. That means the state needs to put even more money into education, something that they're working on doing. Again, this budget provides more, as did last year's budget, provided more than the one before that. And still, there is such a big ask in order for Illinois to meet that threshold and to give relief that would allow local property taxes to truly go down. Right. And they have their own pension problems. Let's, let's move on to some city news. Speaking of pension problems, the city has some of those. Alderman Ed Burke pleads not guilty to corruption charges, sparking renewed calls for his resignation and another round of ethics proposals from Mayor Lori Lightfoot. Meanwhile, Lightfoot appoints a new board to oversee Chicago public schools and city officials deal with the fallout after the most violent weekend so far this year. Derek Blakely, there's two other people indicted here in this Burke case. Are they going to flip on him? Well, that's part of the question. One of the people who was indicted was his top political aide, a guy named Peter Andrews, who we had never even seen before. We didn't even know what he looked like before he got to court. Uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure on him to turn evidence against his boss. But, I mean, his stock and trade, as is in these ward organizations, has been keeping his mouth shut for his whole career. So we'll see if he continues to do that. The other person indicted is a Chinese businessman, Charles Quay, who is charged with uh, trying to influence the alderman to give him help in getting a sign permit. And the alderman, Ed Burke, is also charged with uh, using his influence to try to get that sign permit. So they're kind of charged on both sides of the question. The interesting thing is still that picture of Ed Burke, who's been in the city council for 50 years, who was said to be the most powerful politician in Chicago outside the mayor, making his second trip in, in recent months to the Dirksen Federal Building to face these charges. It's like it's becoming his home away from home. Certainly those video images of the perp walk, so to speak, uh, are, are very resonant uh, throughout all of Chicago. Uh, Brandon Pope, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, wants him to resign. Doesn't look like he's going to do that. Can he still cause some mayhem for her in city council? I think she would actually like for him to stay around as long as possible. I mean, right. I, she's Go ahead. Right. 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 I mean, he's become like point. the face of her whole 
R really against yeah. corruption and what's wrong with city council. Um, as long as he's there, she's getting cool viral moments that people are celebrating and the voters have mandated that they want change. She's got a poster boy in a sense or a, a he's punching bag. Like yeah, exactly. She is wielding the bat. Also, perhaps a reason if things don't get done, mm -hmm. well, somebody to point the finger at. Exactly. Mike Mulligan, we had another violent weekend in Chicago. Do you think there's any answer to, to that Mayor Lori Lightfoot hasn't sort of talked about yet that could get this number down? Yeah, I mean, the sickening thing is like, hey, we had a nice weekend and everyone feels sick to their stomach because you know what that means. It means mm. people are going to be out, you know, you look at the crime numbers and it, obviously the polar vortex seems to el eliminate crime. That's how awful things are in the city, you know, because there's a nice weekend, people go out and because people are out, all sorts of problems come. I, I think We've looked at this a hundred different ways, upside down. I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea what a solution well, is. And, 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 and some of the ideas they have just clearly aren't working. The case that Superintendent Eddie Johnson is making now even stronger is that they arrest people on gun charges, but they're right back out. They bond out really easily. I mean, how do you stop that? That's been pretty well refuted, however, by some studies that have been done. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the court system, which shows that a very small number of people actually get back out after being arrested on charges. And they're trying to blame the, the uh, kind of the changes in the prosecutorial focus, trying to focus more on major crimes and less on, on, on misdemeanors. Um, but, you know, Eddie Johnson came out and made that statement, but that was, that was fairly strongly refuted. Uh, in some of the studies that I saw. So it goes back to Mike's question, uh, what do you do? Well, maybe each party is trying to, to sort of shed some of the responsibility for this. Well, I think one thing missing in the conversation is uh, the need to just kind of get on the ground and not police, but connect. And what I mean by that is I think, you know, a lot of these kids that are doing the shooting are wrapped up in gangs and things like that. Uh, you need someone that's trained to be able to help mediate that and to get in between both sides and stop these conflicts from happening. Uh, it's not going to happen from putting more police on the streets. You need people that are going to be mediators, interventionalists, and people that are trained specially to handle issues That's like that. That goes back something. to the jobs question. Yeah. I mean, and but, the reasons that the governor says put a casino in an area that is, quote, disadvantaged, or again, many of these med uh, marijuana shops, once they are to go, mm -hmm. create opportunity, create jobs, whatever they may be. Yeah. The, the, the problem, there was at one point a, an effort made to collect guns. And basically, all it was just get guns off people. Don't even worry about arrest. Get guns. I have a friend who's a cop said that that was the main priority. And you know what they found out? The more guns just keep coming in. It doesn't, like that, oddly enough, would, would seem would to be a solution for gun violence isn't a possibility. Well, there's Indiana or, and there's so, yeah. states around us and there's downstate Illinois where the guns just uh, seem to... There seems to be a pipeline, and I've asked the mayor about that. She says the feds need to really prosecute those crimes. All right, let's move on to some other news this week. R. Kelly pleads not guilty to a new round of sexual abuse charges. Chicago releases the 911 call from the now infamous incident with actor Jussie Smollett. And the month of May in Chicago sets a new record for rainfall. Um, Amanda Vinicky, what are we going to learn from this 911 tape that, uh, that came out about Jussie Smollett? You know, it, frankly, from what I have read about it, and I didn't actually listen to the tape, you don't learn too much, just that whoever witnessed it was hesitant initially to call it first, and that speaks, again, to perhaps part of the gun problem and where there's a wariness about the police community, and also that allegedly, I believe, he was concerned the police didn't respond quickly enough. So I don't know um, that there's much to learn from perhaps the 911 call, at least from what I have gathered. I still think that there's going to continue to be frustration about this case. It is going to continue continue to be a sore point for Kim Fox, both for her political career and in future cases, because you're going to constantly have, and you've already seen it come up in court, the kind of the small out excuse. If he was able to get this sort of treatment, why can't why I? Why can't my client? Brandon Pope, when is the public just going to be done with this story? Man, I'm wondering, man, because <laughs> I'm just thinking what I learned is I'm tired of this story. <laughs> I, mean, I think the public is over this story, or at least I think most of the public. I think there's still a segment that is galvanized by this, um, and they're going to can continue to push that political pressure because Jesse Smollett is now kind of a poster for if, their frustrations there. If the point was to get publicity, 
I don't, I don't think he got the publicity he wanted, but he got a lot of publicity. He, right? he also he got, got fired publicity. from his show. Well, He's not coming back yeah. next year. Yeah. All right, Brandon Polk, what about the new R. Kelly charges? Uh, is, is the public still wrapped watching this case? Oh, I think I think the extra charges put the public uh, more captivated into this because I, it just seems like they are really – going to try to get as much of a case as they can against this man here. Um, and for many, they think it's a long time coming. We've all, you know, being in Chicago, have seen the rumors and heard the rumors. If you have lived on the south and west side, you and know a young black girl, they have stories about growing up in R. Kelly's at Water Tower Place. He's at the mall. He's at McDonald's buying you things. So it's going to be interesting to actually get to the trial hear testimony, see what evidence they have, and, and see how this And what's the out. end game for him? All the legal fees that he's paying, he, he can't really work anymore. Um, where is this going? <laughs> Man, he looks, he, he looks like he's out of money. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a big part of it. So what's he going to do from here? He had trouble getting out of court the other day because he couldn't In even... In listening to Jim DeRogatis, yeah. who really broke this story, speak about it, that gets to the, yeah. his frustrations, that the fact that now, finally, we're talking about it only when R. Kelly is broke. Is yeah. this truly being taken right. seriously? So I would say listen to him. He's been all over the place, but yes. it's, it's yeah, really no a powerful more than story in terms of what has gone wrong in terms of this uh, conduct mm -hmm. allegedly Certainly being able to continue Certainly he's been frustrated so that long. no one paid attention oh, to this oh, until now. It's a long time writing and fighting I believe about this, how yeah. long this has gone on. It's horrific. All right, well, let's move on to some sports news this week. The Cubs take two out of three from the Rockies and pick up a much-needed closer, free agent Craig Krimble. Kimbrell. Kimbrell? Yeah, Craig third Kimbrell. Place, Kimbrell, the third-place White Sox, dropped two to the Nationals after winning six of their last seven, and the Bears get in a practice ahead of their 100th anniversary celebration this weekend. Mike Mulligan, Cubs are at home against the Cardinals this week, but that's not the only action taking place at Wrigley Field. There's a big GOP fundraiser going on. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, it's, there's like a weekend of fundraising going on around uh, the ballpark. You know, Todd Ricketts is one of the owners of the Chicago Cubs, the Ricketts family, and he is also the, um, the like a, a main uh, fundraiser, the main fundraiser for the Republican Party and for Donald Trump's uh, presidential reelection campaign. And they have a lot of donors coming in and they're having it, you know, just reading it in the paper. They're having a big event at the Four Seasons. And, you know, it's, it's, it's very fortunate timing in a way that they did come up with the money for Craig Kimbrell and you're bringing him in. The news conference introducing him uh, is, uh, is, 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 was held uh, on Friday morning. So you're and saying this isn't a coincidence that well, these two I, things are happening I, at the same I, time? It's purely a coincidence. I don't think there's politics <laughs> connected to sport ever. But, no, uh, never. But it, <laughs> how, how could it possibly be? But it, worked, it just worked out very well because Kimbrell is the piece that, they, that has been needed since the season began. The Cubs have blown 11 saves. It's just extraordinary. And not, they haven't lost all those games, but they've blown a lot of saves. And now they bring in a guy who's on a Hall of Fame track as a closer. And um, they do so after the draft, so there's no draft pick compensation involved in the signing. And, uh, and they get a guy who probably take him a few weeks to have a spring training, but he's been on a throwing program. And he'll be a huge benefit to them. Derek Blakely, is there some PR the Ricketts have to do here to the fans that may not like President Trump or the GOP and the fact that this is happening at Wrigley Field? Well, they're very, very nervous about the whole thing. They want to stay away. The Cubs do want to try to separate this fundraising effort from Wrigley Field. Hey, the ballpark's for everybody. Um, they kind of want it both ways, you know. I mean, the, the family is definitely involved in Republican politics. Todd Ricketts, uh, Pete Ricketts, who's the governor of Nebraska, big Trump supporter. And, and of course, the father as well, Joe Ricketts, who... You know, uh, left those emails. those uh, emails right. if you want a little more uh, on his background. But um, so they're definitely involved in it, but they don't really want the team to be identified with it. And that's a very difficult road to walk when you're doing fundraising and having the Trump people at Wrigley Field. And the architect of the team is Theo Epstein, who is a, you know, a, a very prominent uh, Democrat who mm -hmm. people want him to leave baseball 
and run for office. So he has a brother so who's a, a social worker. So does, does the Ricketts' involvement in President Trump's re-election bother him at all, you think? It's a very good question. I don't know that uh, Theo has talked about that at all. And we should mention, of course, Laura Ricketts on the other side. Yeah, is a Democrat. Uh, who's a, a prominent Democrat. It doesn't seem like either any of this political involvement has done anything to the Cubs fan base, frankly. Right, at this point sure. in time, I'm not sure this weekend yeah. will do anything to it. If anything, it's maybe this new Cubs channel, which um, yeah, for a White Sox fan are going to Yep. I don't. I don't know that I want to pay for that. Well, yeah. I, well, I know I don't. There's actually. a few. I mean, I'll see a few fans on social media say, "I'm not giving my money to the Cubs anymore." But is that really widespread? I don't believe so. If you just look on TV, you know, baseball has a problem with attendance throughout the country. The Cubs have absolutely no problem whatsoever. It's an event every time they play. If you haven't been in the area, go down and just look at the new hotel and mm -hmm. some of the great restaurants. I mean, it is unbelievable. It's boomtown in Chicago. So it, it is their popularity hasn't waned at all. And winning another World Series would certainly add to that as well. It's also boomtown in the White Sox farm system. It looks like the future <laughs> might uh, be arriving next year. Well, here's hoping. I mean, it's very interesting that they've managed to flirt with 500 this year. They're, they're three games under right now, but by the end of the, the weekend, they play Kansas City at Kansas City. Hopefully they can win a few games and hit 500, the miracle mark. But uh, <laughs> they're doing it with a very beaten up pitching staff. They've yeah. had a lot of injuries and they don't really have the kind of unit you would think would be in this position. But the the whole division is in pretty bad shape, for, so it's nice some of the teams are playing, like Kansas City. All right, well, you've uh, made us – you've, you've – I'm not even going to try and tie it up here at the end. I'm just going to say we're, we're, we're out of time. Joel, I'm sorry. I, I didn't have it this week. Derek Blakely, Amanda Vinicky, Brent Pope, and Mike Mulligan. We will continue this conversation online in our Web Extra video. We'll see you on the next edition of the Week in Review. I'm Parashutz. Good evening. That's the thing that Joel used to do every week was he, he tried to tie up the whole yes, show uh -huh. with – with the last Already thing cool. that the, the last guest did. Exactly right. <laughs> I was going to say something. You've put us in. You've put us in, you've, you've, brought, you've made us in good. You brought, brought us to the night. You brought us to the night. Oh, there you go. You, you, go. you closed it out well. Like it's Friday. Right. Exactly. There you go. Uh, how about the Bears' 100th anniversary is oh, this man, weekend? Have you special. seen that? That should be their gathering. Is that this weekend? It's this weekend, and it's at uh, the Rosemont Theater. Since they were the Bears of the Decatur Staleys. Just to look at that. Yeah. It's unbelievable. The list. And the people who aren't on the List. They, they have a new book coming out. Don't believe Jay Cutler's on the list. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of arguments about who belongs where, yeah. even among the players. Closed so captioning is made possible by Robert A. Clifford and Clifford Law Offices. Robert Clifford is the honoree of this year's Illinois Bar Foundation's annual fundraising event that raises money to enhance the availability of justice for those without attorneys throughout the state. was cool he's a he's a professional gambler so he oh. approached it like a professional gambler not like All right,